Um, <clears throat> let's go to the next patient here. By the way, actually, if I go back to this, uh, this if I can go back to this first patient here, the only actual pathology on this person was a little bit of, um, <clears throat> besides the mild chondral degeneration, it's that there's a little bit too much fluid deep to this iliotibial band here. And that, that was uh, clinically consistent with iliotibial band friction syndrome. So here's the axials. And so here's the IT band over here. And the flu is extending further back than you expect the joint fluid to. And so it was inflammatory change deep to the IT band. And that's important because the clinical symptoms can mimic a lateral meniscal tear and the treatment's obviously much different. <clears throat> so once again, I'd go through coronals, looking at the bones and marrow, looking pretty good here. Um, you look to see, does the patient have any fusion? And I typically would look at the axial images quickly for that. Um, not much fluid in this patient. Then we'd go through looking at the, the ligaments from medial to lateral. So medial collateral ligament, look for fluid. Um, look at the PCL here coming down, the ACL here. See how nice and kind of linear it is? Sometimes you see it better on the T1. Sometimes you see it better on the T2 weighted images or the fluid sensitive. Um, ACL attaching nicely to the femur here, sweeping down, looking good. Fibular collateral, there's this little cameo. See the little face there? Fibular collateral is going to come off here, go down to the fibula, biceps in there, coming anteriorly, <clears throat> IT band. And actually, this is another patient that has IT band friction syndrome. So you see the IT band and you see edema deep to it. You don't necessarily always see fluid superficial to it with IT band friction. Um, and the critical thing about making this diagnosis is that you want to just make sure you're not getting confused with joint fluid. So we look, when we look at the other um, sequence, we'll, we'll sort that out. But um, and, and sometimes we have cases where it's like, well, we don't know where the patient's symptoms are. And we just say this raises the possibility or, or this may represent IT band friction syndrome. Anyway, so that was like IT band. <clears throat> and then we've finished up with the the ligaments, and then we go to the menisci. And again, what I'd recommend is kind of zooming in, windowing carefully, sweeping around medial meniscus, looking for internal signal, and looking at the fluid sensitive for the edges, kind of can see the cartilage along there as well. And then laterally, same kind of thing. Look at the meniscus carefully as you sweep around, see if you see anything go into the surface. Make sure you check the root ligaments look at the fluid sensitive for the edges, make sure there's not a little, little bit of blunting, and there you go. <clears throat> so then we'd go to the sagittals, and again, I, I, won't, I won't go through everything on this again, but recheck in lateral compartment, go through the cruciates, kind of expect them to look normal, right, because they look normal on the, on the coronals. So here again, pretty nice ACL, PCL, medial compartment, and then extensor mechanism, quad, patellar tendon, patellofemoral cartilage. So back to that IT band for a second. So here <clears throat> we put up coronals and axials. <clears throat> so here's IT band coming down laterally, and it's a little bit of ill-defined edema there. And so the trick here is that normally you have some fluid in the joint. So this is a little bit of joint fluid here, probably a physiologic amount in this patient. And normally what happens is it can be along a recess and it kind of goes about halfway back on this lateral femoral condyle to about here. So if you see fluid more posteriorly than that, like this right here, that's that's much more likely IT band friction syndrome than, the, than just some joint fluid, okay? And most people have, you know, barely any uh, abnormal, any increased signal there at all. So just while we're here, then another nice ACL attachment to the femur, fanning out, PCL, MCL over here, and then the fibular collateral here. Nice dark low signal structure coming down to the biceps, <clears throat> and then popliteus, fibrous uh, tendon coming up here, sweeping around to insert on this little popliteus notch here. Okay. 
So let's take a look at, uh, keep looking at a few cases here. So different patient, um, and some of these are outside scans, so their uh, sequences may not be exactly the same. Sweeping through the coronal images here. Um, the bones are pretty good in this patient. Um, I don't think there's any major uh, bone marrow edema or contusions. Um, if we're going through, the MCL is a little bit thick. And one rule of thumb is that it should be fairly uniform in thickness. Um, it should be about the same thickness up here as it is down below. This one's a little bit thicker approximately, and that may be that there's a prior mild ACL sprain or low-grade MCL injury that's got some scarring or thickening, but there's no edema adjacent to it, <clears throat> okay? So PCL's okay here. What about ACL here? So here's lateral femoral condyle. ACL should be coming off here. And you see how it's looking kind of thickened and globular intermediate signal there? And as you come down, you just don't see those nice fibers of the ACL that you're expecting, right? So already on the coronals, we're very suspicious about the ACL being injured here. And the lateral structures are okay. So if we want to look at the ACL, then we'd look, you know, go to the sagittals. <clears throat> And so here's the intercondylar notch. PCL looks good. And ACL, see it's a little bit tricky to see. It's a little bit fuzzy in here. There's another scan here. Um, probably this one's a little bit better. And see, it, it's kind of tends to be easy to see the normal ACL, but once it gets torn, then it gets a little can get a little bit confusing. But right here, proximally, there's ACL fibers that are coming down. There's probably some fibers here that are laying down. So that's that's a complete ACL rupture, right? Everybody getting that? All right. <clears throat> and what about this patient? So what do you all see on these two sequences here if we're looking at like bones and marrow? Right, excellent. So significant bone marrow edema, low signal on T1, bright on T2. There's a little bit of a lower signal area on the subchondral area here. And then if we go sweeping posteriorly, get, look carefully at the edges. There's probably a little bit in the posterior aspect of the tibia here as well. And so we'd look at bones and marrow, fluid, ligaments, um, looking at the MCL here, pretty good, PCL. <clears throat> but what about the ACL in this patient? So kind of expecting to see low signal bands of tissue right in there, but we're just not really seeing that. Okay, so that's suspicious. And then we'll look at the sagittals. Laterally, things get busy. And the good news is it's actually not that common to have lateral uh, uh, fibular collateral ligament injury. So the one that's the hardest to see sort of in a way spares us from, from needing to look carefully at it. But, but when it does get injured, it gets, gets to be kind of... Uh, a little bit confusing and you need to be really systematic. So if we're looking over here, it looks like it's abnormal, right? Because there's increased fluid in, around the whole lateral, posterolateral lateral aspect of the knee. If you look in here, this is that popliteus notch. So this structure right there, that's popliteus tendon. And so if we sweep around and see a little bit of intermediate signal, but it's sweeping around there. So that sort of accounts for that structure. Then you want to try to account for the fibular collateral ligament itself. And so one, one thing you can do is say, all right, let me find the other stuff. So here's the biceps femoris, oops, <clears throat> coming down to insert. And we know the fibular collateral should insert right next to that. So then we find this thing here. See this pretty taut linear low signal thing there and there coming up to that cameo. And you can kind of follow it. Um, there is some periligamentous signal here. So this could be a low grade fibular collateral ligament injury. Um, there's not not like an obvious discrete tear. We'll look at that on the axial. So that's fibular collateral. Come forward, find the IT band here, IT band. And if somebody's got other injuries and they have a little bit of fluid deep to the IT band, we don't usually bring up, oh, that's probably also IT band friction syndrome because it just be, could be secondary to the other injury. Um, this patient's menisci are pretty good, um, but if you look, at the uh, coronal image here of the lateral meniscus. I see the medial is pretty low signal here, pretty low signal throughout, lateral. So 
or medial meniscus. The lateral meniscus has kind of some vague intermediate signal that goes to the surface there. So that it's possible to get things like meniscal contusions and things like that, like a diffuse injury to the meniscus. Um, this could be one of those. I tend not to call those that often. It's, it's not a discrete tear. Um, and on the fluid sensitive, it looks like it's pretty well intact. So it'd be kind of a judgment call how to, how to qualify that. But, but what it would do for me is it'd be like, oh, I see something in the body of that lateral meniscus there. I better look real carefully there when I look at the sagittals, okay? <clears throat> now, to be fair, if you only had one sequence to do of the knee, you had like Obamacare and you had <clears throat> like only a five minute scan time, um, I think I'd probably do a sagittal T2 weighted scan or sagittal proton density with fat set because you see most of the relative in information on that and that you don't see everything on the coronal. So, so you, you could take an approach where you said, you know, I just gonna, I just need to see everything on the best plane possible. And probably like a sagittal would be the, the most optimal plane. So I won't, my feelings won't be hurt if you decide to start your search on sagittal. Part of it kind of probably harkens back to the old hard copy film days and the, you know, we had to hang up the films in order and we tend to start with the coronals, but <clears throat> anyway. Um, so here we are in the intercondylar notch in this patient. Remember, we thought the ACL looked abnormal. And so here's lateral, here's, here's the PCL. So if you can find the PCL, you know the ACL should be in the neighborhood. And again, a pretty good example of an ACL tear, right? Because ACL is laying down here. It's not as steep as this. There's discontinuity right in there. And typically when you see something that looks like this abnormal in an ACL, even if you see a few fibers intact, that's a basically functionally going to be a complete tear. So it's not something that patients are going to recover from. The ligament's not going to heal, and it needs to be either reconstructed um, or one needs to decide to, to live without the ACL. <clears throat> okay. So as we go over laterally here, as was pointed out, there's quite a bit of edema in the lateral femoral condyle. And looking at the lateral meniscus here, remember there was that vague signal in the body. may not be that easy to see on the, on the sagittals here, but looking pretty good. And then coming along here, can you see this posterior horn of the lateral meniscus? There's a little line here, and there's a little tiny line there that goes to the inferior articular surface. That could be like a small tear of the inferior surface of the lateral meniscus, okay? The other thing that's relevant in this patient is not only do they have that bone contusion, but this little line right there, that's probably a little bit of microfracture. So that's, that's pretty high grade contusion there. And then medially, the meniscus itself is actually in reasonable shape. But the problem with this patient is that they have some degree of injury of where the posterior horn of the medial meniscus is up against the capsule at the menisco capsular junction. And so another thing you should be looking for when you review these scans is, do you see low signal between the capsule and the meniscus as you scroll around? So medially, you should have really tightly bound capsule and meniscus. And this patient just has a little bit of increased signal. It probably is some degree of, of injury at that junction, but it's not like grossly separated, uh, but it's the type of thing we would definitely uh, mention. Um, <clears throat> let me make sure I show these axial images here because they tend to harp on that. So if we, we go back to the sagittal midline here, looking at that ACL, <clears throat> then, you know, you expect here that you're not going to see that pretty black line where the ACL attachment is. Okay. So here we are, lateral and medial. And so this is the region of the ACL that should be like really compact, low signal band in there. And you come up to the, the femur, there's probably, see, see these fibers right there kind of sweeping down? That's these fibers right here, still a little bit, um, still attaching to the femur. But then you go down like to here and you just can't see it. So this is this area of discontinuity um, high grade tear, and then you go down towards the foot plate, and this is like the ACL inserting here. Okay, you seeing that okay? Okay. 
next victim. So um, radiographically, we may see signs that are clues to ACL injury. And one of the things to look at is the, the terminal sulcus of the femur. And it's not always easy to tell what's medial and lateral on a radiograph, <clears throat> but in this patient, you can see there's you can see two condyles of the femur, especially here, right? There's one condyle there and another one. So this one um, goes around and it's probably this condyle that's pretty round. That's probably medial. And then this one goes down and continues and then it gets pretty flat in there. So, so if you have a deepening of this terminal sulcus of the femur, that can be a sign that you have an ACL injury on plain films. Do you know of another sign that you might see on a radiograph that could be indicative of ACL tear? A Sagan fracture? Right, yeah, good. So that definitely can occur. And so this one, again, so lateral compartment here, <clears throat> quite a bit of edema, right, throughout the femur in the tibia, deepening of that terminal sulcus. It should be only like a, a millimeter or two deep there, there, and then looking for the ACL. It's pretty similar to that last case where it's torn in the proximal third of it. There's a little bit on the femur, but then it's kind of laying down here, high-grade ACL tear. Here's one of the worst ones that I've seen. So I'm just on the sagittal images here. And so they don't quite sync up, but here's lateral femoral condyle, lateral tibia. And this patient, um, if we go to the notch here, here's the PCL. ACL is kind of shredded in here. Okay. So then I'm going to come back to the, the lateral um, femur, and he's actually got a big divot out of the out of the uh, the femur here. So you can see the bone marrow edema, see this bony irregularity, and then we zoom in on this a little bit more here. <coughs> this is um, articular cartilage of the tibia. Here's articular cartilage of the femur but it goes here and then it sort of stops and there's these little chunks of cartilage that are sitting in this fracture, this depressed fracture of the lateral femoral condyle. Um, he's also got some injury to the cartilage of the posterior tibia here, including some undermining at the uh, chondral osseous junction here. So that's gonna be some, some chondral uh, delamination and then probably a little bit, bunch of chondral bodies posteriorly sitting in here. So this is a bad injury and you know, when uh, orthopedists look at patients for ACL tears, often they're, it's pretty clear that they have a, a torn ACL uh, clinically or based on the mechanism. And what they really want to know is, is it an isolated injury or is, it, is there other stuff going on that is going to influence the prognosis? So in a patient like a couple that I showed, it's like, you know, pretty much an isolated ACL injury. So that's a really good prognosis. Someone like this who's got a pretty big area of chondral damage and fracture and, you know, undercutting of that cartilage, that's a really bad prognosis. So the surgeon that operates on this guy thinking he's going to have a good outcome, um, you know, could be, could be surprised. And um, in fact, this particular patient, the, the, the main physicians that were taking care of him were actually happy that he went elsewhere to get his surgery because they knew that the outcome was probably not going to be good. <clears throat> um, let's see here. So let's take a look at this one. So here's another one where there's, uh, I, I don't think I drilled down on that last fibular collateral case, and I, I don't want to dwell on that too much, but coronal images, <clears throat> um, looking at what we've been focusing on the ACL here. It's a little bit too intermediate in signal here, right? So it should be about as dark as the PCL, but as we come down, it's like, I don't really see good ACL fiber. So I'm really worried that that ACL is gonna be, gonna be abnormal. There's definitely like some patchy areas of mild bone edema here. And then looking at the lateral structures, <clears throat> 
so come in anteriorly. This is going to be the IT band. Okay, some joint fluid, a little bit of fluid next to it. I want to find the fibular collateral ligament. So I'm going to come all the way back here to the biceps uh, fibula. And so this is going to be fibular collateral ligament coming up. And then remember, I have to come anteriorly to find it. So that's probably FCL right there and there. And it looks like it's coming up and attaching okay, but there's quite a bit of periligamentous edema. And so that's going to be kind of the lowest grade injury of a fibular collateral ligament um, tear. And the way, you know, we identify abnormality on the coronal images, and then we try to refine it on the axials. So if I put up the axials here, <clears throat> then again, remember what you want to do, and probably the, the most optimal plane to find the uh, fibular collateral is probably the axials, if you know where to look. So laterally here, so let me go back here. So <clears throat> here's biceps, fibular collateral, okay, coming up. And so here's biceps femoris all the way down to the fibula here. And then separating out from it, this thing right there, that's fibular collateral. And you should be able to follow that up to the femur. Now, maybe it's a little bit attenuated. There could be some partial tearing of the ligament here, but if there's no gap in it. There's no high-grade tear. And so typically those things will be treated conservatively anyway. But ACL in this patient, come up to the femur here, you should have that nice thick black band. It's just not there. So that, again, is a high-grade ACL tear. Um, let me jump a couple cases here to show other, other things as well. The medial collateral ligament here, so, and this is going to be the T1 and like a pretty heavily T2 weighted sequence here, very heavily T2. Um, we want to look for a continuity of the ligament on the T1 anatomic images. And then on the fluid sensitive, you want to look for periligamentous edema. So this, this qualifies as periligamentous edema. Normal people shouldn't have any fluid next to the ligament like that. But if ligament looks like it's completely intact here, like there's no discrete tearing, then that would be an MRI grade one type injury. So grade one is periligamentous edema, but intact ligament. Grade two is some intrinsic signal within the ligament could be par consistent with partial tearing. And then grade three is when the whole thing is completely disrupted and you can see a gap and waviness, okay? So again, what you want to do, if you see that on the coronals, is try to troubleshoot it on axials to try to refine your thinking, okay? So, so here's MCL here, and then on the axial, <clears throat> it's this band-like structure right there. So we're going to come up, and the normal MCL is a little bit thicker anteriorly than it is posteriorly, and there's some subdivisions of it that we won't get into, but MCL here, and it's looking pretty good, right? Like there's low signal throughout it, and then you get down towards this part, and there's a little bit of periligamentous edema. So that's consistent with an MRI grade one MCL tear, partial tear, or sorry, we, we, we tend to use the word sprain a little bit loosely because you could call this a sprain, but in reality, those complete ACL tears that I showed, those are also sprain. They just happen to be like a grade three sprain, like a complete tear. So the term sprain is um, a little bit uh, ambiguous at some point. So we would call this, um, you know, very low grade MCL injury without discrete tear. This person's ACL, if we just double check that. So here's, here's the ACL in here coming down and it just, should show this nice low signal dark tissue along the femur right there going down to the intercondylar uh, region. And I think I should stop here pretty quick. Let me just um, show this case of a little bit of a higher grade MCL injury. So T1, fluid sensitive. So remember the normal MCL is like uniform thickness going up to the femur here. And in this example, it's a little bit thicker here. And then you have this intermediate signal near the femoral attachment, increased fluid around on the T2 weighted scan here. Um, and so we want to look at the axials to kind of look intrinsically at the ligament there for the, to grade this. It's probably going to be like a grade 2 MCL sprain because it's, uh, because it's partially torn. 
Nice look at the ACL here coming down. Um, this patient otherwise is fairly, um, fairly normal, so it's more of like an isolated MCL injury. So if you leave that there and put the axials up. <clears throat> Lots of fluid around deep, kind of around the femur here, but if we go down and try to find the MCL, it's this structure here. And remember, it's like normally pretty compact, thicker in the front than in the back, but here it's kind of striated with increased intrasubstance signal. Then you come down, then it's thick again, arguably too thick. So this may be somebody that had like an acute on chronic ACL tear, sorry, MCL tear. Um, and we would call this like an MRI grade two because there's partial tearing of the proximal fibers, but no complete tear all the way through. All right. So anyway, to kind of close the session here, remember I showed you this uh, this cool website on xrayhead.com of uh, MSK Anatomy. And then we went through kind of my systematic search um, plan, looking at just coronals, then sagittal, then axial to get through the scan efficiently. And then it's just a matter of like, you know, learning the anatomy in great detail and then looking for these subtle areas of edema and so on and being able to, you know, see enough cases that you can decide whether something's really normal or abnormal. So um, with that, I will uh, stop and I'm happy to answer any questions.